did. I don't understand. She lives in Los Angeles. I live in Arizona. You know how easy it is to get a restraining order? How easy is it? A, a phone call and one notarized document, maybe two phone calls. But I don't know what that means exactly. It means the court declared you a threat to their personal safety. In layman's terms, it means you have to stay away from them. I'm speaking in layman's terms. If a layman is a lawyer, then I agree. Welcome to Cohen in the City, and it's always a pleasure to have a local boy makes good, and Scott Abramovich falls into that category, and I'm sure so does Hayden Sito, even though he's not from Montreal, but uh, we'll name him an honorary Montrealer. We're here to talk about Eat Wheaties, which is a new motion picture that has come out in the United States and in Canada on video on demand. And it is, uh, I, I got a screener, Scott. I know Scott since he's a young man, uh, growing up uh, when he grew up in Cote St. Luke and went to the Grand Slam baseball school with Johnny Elias. And, uh, and uh, so he sent me a screener and I was able to watch it uh, 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 in the comfort of my home. And I loved it. It revolves around a character named Sid Straw. Uh, whose life unravels as he tries to prove he was friends with Elizabeth Banks. What a concept. I laughed myself sick. And Hayden Sito is one of the stars. And uh, Hayden, by the way, was very, very tough on poor Sid Strom. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but uh, we'll start off with you, Scott. Uh, you wrote, directed, and produced this comedy. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the movie. Well, it's based on a book that I absolutely loved called uh, The Locklear Letters, which is written, uh, I think it's 2003 by, uh, by Michael Kuhn. And um, I came across the book through a friend that I was uh, at school with named Evan Shankman. And um, he, he passed the book on to me um, at a time when he was working with Michael at a law firm. I fell in love with it. I just, I didn't quite see it as a film when I first read it. I just loved it. Um, and then about 10 years later, maybe more probably, 12, 13 years after I read the book, I reread it again. And suddenly this idea of somebody screwing up their life on social media, along with this feeling that uh, stars like Hayden are accessible, just a click away in uh, everyone's lives in a way that uh, made it feel like the story was relevant uh, and, and could center a film. Well, it, 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 it was very well done and we'll get to it, uh, some more of it in a minute, but uh, now Hayden uh, is, uh, is working uh, on screen with one of my favorite actresses, Sarah Chalk, who I just loved. Uh, I don't know, I'm a lifetime-ish kind of guy, believe it or not. And I watched those, uh, so I loved Firefly Lane, which she was just in. And uh, so Hayden works with uh, Sarah on screen and they more or less represent Elizabeth Banks and poor uh, Sid Straw, who didn't really understand social media, and uh, ends up uh, kind of uh, going overboard with uh, with with uh, Elizabeth Banks and uh, uh, you guys, uh, Hayden, you and Sarah Chalk's character get pretty pretty rough with uh, you. You give them a really rough time, Sid, don't you? Yeah. Um, well, I, I would think Sarah's character gave gave Sid a harder time. I think uh, Keaton, the character that I play, uh, actually, you know admires uh, Sid quite a bit, admires his candor and his, uh, uh, his, uh, uh, his, you know, naivete, you know, I think I, I was really attracted to that, that inspired my character to do more in his career as well. Have you had anyone stalk you on social media, Hayden? Uh, Cause you've been in, a, you've been, you've been in uh, some, you've been in some great uh, movies and TV shows over the years. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I get very nice, um, you know, fan messages about, you know, uh, my work and everything. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as say, uh, stalked. Um, <laughs> nobody, nobody's shown up on my doorstep. So, uh, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but yes, uh, I, I, I do, um, do, I do see how, you know, social media, like, um, what Scott said, like, we're immediately accessible and we can see that, you know, there are upsides and downsides to that. Yes, yes. And now Scott, Tony Hale is the lead. He's a, he's a, he's a great actor. He was fantastic. And um, to me, he, he looked like a mixture of Larry David and George Costanza. Is that how you wanted to portray him? I mean, a guy who really, <laughs> let's be, let, we're only talking about a screen guy, a guy who was like a, really lo a real loser, basically, <laughs> and, and, and just does crazy things. Yeah, I, you know, the way that I always approach Sid from from the second I read the book to writing the script and, and to 
you know, casting uh, the role with Tony, who was, who was remarkable, um, was that this is a guy who, if you surrounded him with people who got who he was and connected with him, he's a funny, engaging, you know, amazing guy, but he's stuck in a part of his life where everyone around him uh, just doesn't get his jokes. They just don't, they don't want to laugh with him. Uh, and, you know, the only person that really he has is his brother um, at the start of the film. And his brother, you know, is, is uh, stuck with a wife who can't stand Sid. So, <laughs> you know, slowly the, the film is meant to, to move in a way that as his life gets uh, gets sort of derailed by these messages and, and uh, Elizabeth Banks is his lifeline. He starts connecting with people around him and Hayden's character is one of the first characters he actually connects with. You know, Hayden plays uh, Keaton, who's the assistant to to um, Elizabeth Banks' big agent. And, uh, you know, he's he's actually the first person who, um, you know, who hears and listens to Sid and actually believes him. And, you know, there's, there's a great back and forth between, you know, uh, um, Hayden and uh, Sarah Chalk where Hayden's actually defending Sid and, and explaining that he's not stalking her, that he actually knew her and, uh, and, no, and nobody else wants to hear it. And so uh, as the film progresses, he starts connecting with more and more people, uh, a lawyer played by uh, Paul Walter Hauser, who's not actually allowed to practice law because he went to an, uh, a non-accredited school um, and uh, the waitress at, uh, at the restaurant that he's a regular at. So it's, it's, it's hopefully gonna find um, you know, a place for, for viewers where they, where they understand why Sid's not connecting with other people. They see why he's his own worst enemy, but at the same time, understand the, that he's actually not a bad guy. And he's just, he just has to hone in this uh, energy and this, you know, attempt to try too hard to make people laugh and, and find, you know, the right people to, to work his magic on. Yeah. Hayden, it was pretty funny because uh, in your role, you, you had to admit to uh, Sarah Chalk's character that there was there was a smudge on the photo of Elizabeth Banks. And so uh, that whole thing was not just a one, that was used several times. And uh, let me ask you, in the court scene, which which viewers will will get a real kick out of, did you, did you have to do extra takes and just crack up too many times when you were doing these things? Uh, for me, no, I mean, I was so, I was, I just remembered sitting there and we shot that, we, that was a night shoot. Scott, remind me if I... It was, yeah. It was a nice shoot. I was... I just remember I was on an energy drink and um, <laughs> I was just watching Tony do his monologue over and over again. And I was so... I was so enthralled with his performance um, that I, I didn't break scene at all because of... I, I, it was just acting class for me. I just got to sit there and take it all in. I had a great time. Uh, Scott, you know, when I watched the movie, and again, I, I'll repeat, I really, really loved it, and I would really urge people to go video demand and search it and find it. Um, I said to myself, I would love, I would watch a series with a character like this. Have you thought about possibly, uh, you know, sp you know, springing this off and have a character like, a, you know, like a Sid character? I could see it being a weekly episode uh with with just his antics yeah i mean there, there's definitely the the possibility for that i think what's what's fun about sid is that he's um you know he's a character that i think we're used to seeing on screen but never typically as the as the main character you know he's the weird brother or the strange guy in the office uh, or the or the quirky friend uh, but centering it around him i thought was uh, was refreshing, and I think on a, a TV series, I mean, the closest thing, yeah, you know, like Larry David, I think is 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 in that same sort of cringe comedy uh, category. Um, you know, Michael Scott, the Steve Carell character on The Office. Um, you know, so so yeah, there's definitely um, there's definitely a place for that. It would be fun to to keep Sid going. There's actually a sequel to the book, so uh, you know, Sid moves to Los Angeles, so it would be. Uh, more for Hayden too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hayden, 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 what do you think about a Sid Straw series? And maybe Hayden ends up going to work for Sid Straw because Sid, uh, you know, he over the course of the movie, he changes his uh, his life a little bit, you know? Uh, that would be a dream. I would love that. <laughs> so, so Scott, maybe we've created something here. Maybe this interview for The Suburban has created, and you could come back and film a segment after the pandemic in Kerwin Park uh, and maybe Sid, because he's a good softball player, he was knocking the ball over the fence. Maybe we could recreate the Grand Slam baseball school with Sid Straw and his many girlfriends. And maybe Elizabeth Banks could uh, make a guest appearance or maybe there could be a Facebook announcement with her involved. 
I got a lot of nephews that would, that would be up for that in Montreal. <laughs> so, so tell me, uh, when was this uh, filmed and where was it filmed? It was shot in Los Angeles, actually, before the pandemic. Okay. Um, and, uh, and we were just about ready uh, to take the film out when, um, when the pandemic hit. We, were, we still had some finishing stuff to do. And we were doing the post-production in Montreal. Um, and uh, and our, our post-production guy, Tony uh, Manolikakis um, at uh, Rev, Rev, uh, Rev, Rev 13 Films. Uh, I hope I got that right. Um, he... Uh, he was a one man show because, you know, between the curfews and the limitations, uh, it was, it was not easy for him. Uh, but we finished the film and we, we were able to do a lot of stuff remotely. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited that it's coming out now. I think, I think the timeliness of this kind of a story it will hopefully connect with, with people. I hope so. Now, Hayden, you're in LA too. I know you're, 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 you're a Canadian as well, right? Yes, I am from Vancouver. All right. So from some Vancouver. So, uh, tell me, I always like, I've, I've interviewed a number of actors over the last year. Uh, how has the uh, the pandemic affected you? Are you filming anything right now? And, and how is it going under COVID uh, protocols? Uh, well, the only thing that's changed now, um, I, I think it's worked in my favor because um, everything's a self-tape nowadays. I can do everything from home. Um, I don't really have to drive to a casting office and you know risk getting a parking ticket. And the parking ticket in LA is... It's a it's a hefty one. So um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know I, I'm I've saved a lot of um, fuel. Um, I invested in a self tape setup and everything. And um, yeah, I just got back from Syracuse uh, shooting a movie for Hulu called Sex Appeal. Um, so everything's more or less the same, um, and I have more agency over my own uh, auditions nowadays. So I, I think it's worked in my favor. So what was it like in Syracuse shooting a movie? What was it like in terms of COVID I'm talking about? Did everyone have to get tested every day? Uh, uh, wearing masks, stuff like that? Yes. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, I think it's the same in every production right now. It's like you, when you're not doing a scene, you have your mask on. Um, all the actors are separated into their own, uh, own green rooms. We, don't, we no longer have a, a whole green room for everybody. So. Um, that's the only difference that I noticed, um, in terms of Syracuse, uh, just not much to do, not much to do there. <laughs> you know, well, I've never been to Syracuse and I, I heard New York and I got excited because I, uh, I was imagining, uh, Brooklyn and then, um, I, or Manhattan. And when I got there, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. this is, uh, this is nice. This is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, did you eat Wheaties when you were young? Uh, how did you get the name Eat Wheaties for the movie? And uh, you certainly gave, uh, was there some product placement going on there? Well, the, the book had that story um, about Sid ending his letters uh, with Eat Wheaties. Um, so it was something that I, I always loved about the, about the book and, and, I, and paying it off in the film, you know, it, it, has, it has its payoff. So calling it Eat Wheaties just made the most sense to me. Uh, and what's fascinating is that uh, the book got re-released this year with the with the release of the film, and he changed the title. It's actually look, it's uh, it's it went from the Locklear letters, if you can see that, and now it's called E. Wheaties. Oh my gosh, isn't that <laughs> so amazing? Guess, That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh... Oh. Yeah, so uh, so I guess I was onto something. Um, it's funny at the beginning of this, I know uh, David Phillips, one of the uh, the other producer, um, and uh, Dan Webb, uh, another one of the producers. They were they were a little reluctant on the name. They were there was there was at one point uh, an attempt to try and convince me to call it something else, and I was like, no, this is this is good. This is Eat Wheaties. It's 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 why this movie I think uh, will be. Uh, you know sticky with people when you see the poster you you know you, someone says you, have you seen any wheaties it's you'll remember that title and it's mm -hmm. not often anymore i mean so many of the titles are are you know generic um so yeah it was i always wanted to call it e wheaties and yeah general mills uh has been amazing you know we asked permission at the beginning uh before production to uh, to use um you know to use the product in the film and the name um it wasn't it wasn't quite product placement we were just asking permission even though we technically you know didn't really need it um i wanted to make sure that they were on board with this and i also didn't think that there would be any reason why they wouldn't be and since then they've been they've been great they actually made a tony hale uh, wheaties box which was really cool. Uh, <laughs> we got to send it out to uh, to Tony and to some people on uh, critics and stuff for social media. So it's been a good relationship. I hope they I hope they're happy with the film. I know the the publicity and marketing team over there love it. So 
Well, there's a great trailer, which we're going to include after this video. People can watch it. And I think after you watch the trailer, people are going to either want to see it in a theater or on video on demand. My final question is, I know it's on video on demand, but there are movie theaters open in Montreal. Any chance it'll be shown on any screens in Montreal or will we see it on the movie network eventually or one of our local uh, Crave TV or something like that? I, I hope so. It's not going to be out in theaters, uh, sadly. I, you know, when they made the plan a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, um, they decided not to go theatrical. It went theatrical in the U.S. I got to go actually see it at a drive-in in L.A., which was pretty cool. Um, but in Canada, they're they're doing a, a VOD um, exclusive release. So, but it's available now on iTunes and Amazon and okay. uh, and Rogers and uh, I think all the uh, Bell, all of the uh, VOD services. So it should be easy to find. Okay, that's um, great. That's yeah. great. And look, uh, uh, now uh, iTunes, it's so easy to watch a movie. So uh, uh, congratulations, and I hope we'll be talking more in the years to come to both of you about your success. Thank you, Hayden, and thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me. All Thanks, right. Mike. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.